Oh, good morning and welcome to an appropriately freezing Thruxton race circuit in southern England. Uh, today is the first insight that I'm providing you into my journey starting racing together with Caterham in the Caterham Academy. Check this out. I'm surrounded by Caterhams. I'm going to get out of the way because I'm in the, uh, the Caterham station where our cars are, are prepped for the day. So. Um, as part of this journey, I really want to take you along for the reason why I chose Caterham. Uh, inherently, racing is very expensive. And I'm not going to say that, you know, access to racing through Caterham is cheap. However, I did quite a lot of research before I joined this program. And uh, by far, it is disproportionately the best value series that I've been able to identify so far. What I mean by that is, for around about 30 grand, and listen, before you all chirp in the comments, I know 30 grand is 30 grand, but for around about 30 grand, this is what you get included. So, you get the car. Now, in a lot of seasons, fees like 30 grand don't cover the car. They just cover the entry fee. In the Caterham Academy, you get to keep your car. The great thing about that is, if you really enjoy your first season and you want to keep going, you get to use the same car next season, so the same car for 30 grand, you just change the tyres and the roll bar and you're on for the next season. There's no other further investment in the car. So 30 grand, you get your car, you get your ARDS. So your ARDS is your racing license that you have to take in the UK in order to go racing. That is thrown in with the price. But the main thing is you get to keep the car. Now I can't stress how unique that is for a race season. You get to keep the car for next season. It's also a road car. So you're getting two cars in one and the fun is disproportionate for the value. Uh, also, you get to stay on the same tyres as well. That's the other thing about the Academy series. It's all entry level, designed to make it very easy and accessible. So here it is, Juan race car. Um, what's brilliant about these as well, most racing series, uh, the cars are not road legal. So while you're also getting a race car for the value of the car, you're also getting a road car, hence the number plate. So if you want to, you can drive to and from the race circuits themselves. And also you can have practice in your car on the road. Now that's not to do with you know, going fast on the road, it's just to become familiar with it. Uh, something that you might not think about is, is actually racing starts. So if you can find yourself a quiet back country road and practice your clutch control, uh, it's invaluable stuff to get that jump on the start line, which no doubt I shall find out uh, later on in the year. Uh, areas where it can get a little bit expensive is all of the gear that you have to buy. Now you might have noticed that I'm wearing my shiny new Caterham Race Academy suit. That's brilliant. Um, but I've also had to buy, so my lid, I've actually had this for years for track days. I also recently bought a hand device. When you put that on, you look very professional. Um, so that is a safety device where your harnesses go either side of it here and here. Like this, when you're sat in the car, uh, hands device, it has these latches here attached to your helmet so that if you do happen to have a very abrupt shunt, your neck cannot extend beyond that, that line there. It's effectively an essential piece of safety equipment that you have to have. Uh, this one isn't carbon fiber. This is a composite plastic version. Look, uh, that's around about 250 pounds. You can get basically the same thing uh, in carbon fiber, which I was really tempted with to match the helmet, but it's 1,250 pounds. So I promised myself, if I do really well this season, maybe I'll treat myself next season. But honestly, the races are like 20 minutes long and I didn't value the slight weight saving uh, for those shorter races. If you were going to do endurance races, maybe it's worth it. And then uh, I've also had a seat made. So check this out. If I managed to have the JWW logo embroidered with Caterham in the middle. Uh, those of you guys that watched the video before this as part of this series, this seat is custom fitted to me. So you can see conveniently there is a standard Caterham seat. And then here is my bead bag seat, which is fitted to the exact contours of my body. The reason behind that is it really allows you to sort of become one with the car, which gives you a lot more sort of feeling and dexterity when you're uh, trying to interpret what the car is doing as it's moving around on track. But also um, it's, it's more safe. So if you were to get into an impact, uh, there's less chance of your body moving around in the car upon having a heavy shunt. Uh, also in the car, we have rear camera, front camera, and that is also connected to the race 
logic system here, uh, which tells you things like lap times and split sessions and speed and things like that. And then the eagle-eyed of you might have noticed the uh, saw thumb that is my egg timer. Yes, that is an egg timer on the dashboard of my racing car. The reason being, the races, as that time would suggest, are 20 minutes long. There's no clock anywhere else inside the car. So you need to know when you're approaching the last lap of the race. Reason being, because these cars have the aerodynamics of a house brick and they are slightly underpowered, uh, there is a technique in Caterham racing called getting the toe, which is effectively you get in the slipstream of the car in front of you. Now that's pretty standard practice in racing generally, but in Caterham, particularly the academy, uh, it's super important because you don't want to be first, just check this out, you don't want to be first on the last lap. The reason being, if someone behind you has the benefit of your aero toe, they will effectively break out and overtake you to take the win on the last lap. So it's going to be a real game of chess on track with these cars. The reason why you've got the egg timer is to let you know around about when the last lap is happening because races are 20 minutes long. They're done by time, not by laps. So as it's counting down, the chances are you'll be like, oh, we've got 40 seconds left. This is the last lap. Get yourself into a strategic position, hopefully, uh, to get the toe on whoever's in front of you. Um, but now I want to take you on board and see uh, what we can achieve with uh, my base lap time now versus lap time at the end of the day with some instruction from John and that will highlight to you the benefits of seat time and instruction. All right, so this is John. John's a ninja. He, <laughs> he has been showing me a few tips and techniques today. We went out together in, in the car earlier, and then we come back in, and the data is overlaid based on a great lap that you've done versus a poor lap that I've done, and it highlights basically where I'm going wrong and where I'm going right, and how I can translate that to improvements on the track. So we're gonna point you at the screen to give you an idea of the, the kind of data that you can get out of these cars. Now, I'm not gonna claim all the credit here. The rain has stopped, so that's a big one, right? <laughs> okay, um, but I saw on the V-Box, so earlier was a 136? Was yeah, 36, high 36. I mean, high 36, and I saw flash up on the V-Box earlier while I was going around a 133, which is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I didn't think at the beginning of this day we'd be finding that amount of time. That's a good effort. That is pretty crazy. So, taking the card out of the V-Box, plugging it into the John system, and we're gonna find out um, basically, where it went went right finally. Okay. Much much better. Oh, wow. It's okay. The first chicane section. Uh -huh. Much much better than it was earlier. You're still going in there slightly too fast. Right. So if you can see your blue line there, yes. I can yeah. actually zoom in. You see that still, James? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So breaking point's good. Okay. Um, but again, you get through the braking area, and as the apex is approaching, you release yeah. the brake. Right. So you're still going into that corner slightly too quick. You can see my speed, yes. 53 mile an hour, or in kilometers an hour, um, I was doing 94. Yeah. Sorry, I was doing 83, yes. you're doing 94 at the moment. So you're 11 kilometers an hour too fast. So that's sacrificing 
be that. on the exit because I'm ended up scrubbing it off. Exactly that. Right. Exactly that. Okay. That that speed where you're going slightly too fast for the first corner then costs you at Cobb and Seagrave the final two corners in that section. Right. So although you're okay. really quick for that first corner and you're two and a half tenths quicker than I was. By the time you get through the exit, you're yeah. half a second down, so it costs you another two and a half tenths at the next two corners. It's amazing how the entry affects the exit. Mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy. Especially wow. here, and okay. that then costs you all the way out the back of the circuit where you're flat yeah. on the front of yeah. Okay, so there's still time to be found. Still time to be found. Still but you, <laughs> you've dying. gained three seconds in one session, so huge improvement. Mm -hmm. And, and this is the section at the end of the lap. Yeah. Um, See you guys. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah, this section at the end of the lap into yeah. that final chicane, where before you were breaking uh, quite yes. a lot earlier than you could could have done. Uh, now your braking point is good. You're a little bit slower than I was on entry, uh -huh. but you also had less top speed because of the wind today. Okay. And then through the chicane itself. Hey, that trace isn't bad. Very, very close That's to not me. Not bad, so, that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, the season starts. I think first first thing is a sprint to entry, mm -hmm. which is in April sometime, and then track time for me anyway in the academy is May. Yes. Um, so I've got some more time with John, which will be cool. Uh, invaluable. Honestly, look him up. Do you have Instagram account? I do have Instagram, John Barnes Racing. Um, below, and YouTube and if you want to be fast, speak with John Barnes Racing. Link below. Honestly, gains are real. When this isn't fake, this really happened today. Three seconds on a track I've never been on. So thanks very much, man. Well done. I appreciate well, that. Well, Thank you. Nicely done. I'm going to go out and try and shave a few more tents. Go for it. <laughs> also get of course the racing series itself now this year i think i've got seven races we go to anglesey we go to donnington we go to knock hill in scotland we go to snetterton uh we go to silverstone so you get to race on a famous formula one circuit uh, and we also race conveniently at thruxton here now a lot of the time that you'll spend pre-season is at tracks doing either testing or just getting what's known as seat time now seat time is as the word would suggest the amount of time you get to plunk your derriere in there in order to get experience behind the wheel of your car. Uh, so far, I've done two track days in this car. One was at Silverstone, and it was in the middle of Storm Dennis. It was a bona fide tsunami. In fact, in my peripheral vision, as I'm going around corners, I could see the swell of water in the passenger side footwell. And once again, it might sound a bit grim, but honestly, it's part of the adventure. And because these things are so grassroots, so basic and so pure, and to be quite frank, they're a little bit underpowered in the straights, it teaches you so much about the technique, the importance of being on the right line, the braking points, carrying momentum through corners. Why that's important is because you can't rely on the power of the car to make up for lost time elsewhere. You have to be ninja when it comes to keeping the momentum of this otherwise underpowered car. That's the point 
point of it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Ciao.